Good day, people of the world. Got something pretty, uh, I want to say, I want to say as much special as probably a little bit rare uh, and quite a good find. And to see one in this condition is really quite a surprise. It's not perfect, there's a couple of dings on the body, but I'm going to show you. I wonder if you can guess what this is. The bridge will be a giveaway. Really old style bridge there. So it's an 80s, I'd say it's an 80s model, definitely. It could be 90s, but I'd say an 80s. Pickups, some great pickups in there. Were they stock? I probably, I don't think so. But let's just zoom out a bit. It's a beautiful red sparkle finish. And we're gonna, can you guess what it is yet? What brand? That should be a dead giveaway. That's right, it's a Kramer. Specifically, it's a Kramer Pacer. Doesn't that make it an American model? Aren't the Pacers American? If it were Japanese, it'd say made in Japan on the back and it probably would be made by ESP. I'm not sure, but I think these are the American models. And if they are, what a great find this is. Friend of mine, well, a friend, client, whatever you want to call him. He's a friend, nice lad, Justin. He's um, bought a few guitars, guitars to me. He picked this up for $99. Red sparkle finish, Kramer Pacer model FT202 S forward slash MR. Is the S MR stand for? Um, I'm not sure. Hang on. Sparkle metallic red, maybe? I don't know. It'd be nice to be Floyd Rose in though, wouldn't it? But that aside, regular fulcrum type tremolo affair there. No tremolo arm with it. I've had a play on this. And I expected it to be good, but not as good as it was when I played it. This is every bit as good as anything I've got of anything I own. And I've got a 1983 Kramer, Kramer Focus 3000 with a Seymour Duncan Invader, Custom Shop Invader in it, and an original 8283 Floyd Rose. And that's one of my best sounding guitars, and this is up there with it. If not, maybe a little bit better. I don't know. This very, very high, I don't know what pickups they are, but the very high output, I've had to turn the gain down on my amp with that. Um, and I didn't need a, I didn't need to use my uh, Maxon as a boost. What a beautiful guitar! Uh, but this has come in. It says again fret boys in quite a few places, and it's no surprise at all. I've straightened the neck. I've been across with the fret rocker. Initially there were seven frets I thought were high. I've gone across again. There are actually nine frets are high. So it's going to need a complete fret level. Now just looking at these frets, they're quite weeder. They're about 2.3, 2.4 wide, so they're a medium fret. You're not mega high, there's about a millimetre left on them. I've told him I'll do him a fret level on this for a special price because he's a, he's, a, he's a good customer, good client. Um, but I'm going to suggest to him that possibly if he's keeping the guitar and he's got it so cheap, might as well go. I would consider going for a refret on this. Not because the frets are knackered, because they're not knackered. We can still get a dress out of them. But aren't they a little bit small? Wouldn't you like something a bit bigger on there? I'm going to suggest that to him. I'd, I'm going to suggest that to him, see what he says. The neck on this is amazing. The red sparkle, you don't catch it, do you? Not with this, because I've got an artificial light on, because it's a bit dreary, a bit dreary deirdre today. The red sparkle on this is amazing. It's a lovely looking guitar. Only two springs on the tremolo. I'd like to put another spring in there, and that spring is just about catching on the edge of the body. I'd like to probably just file a little bit away at that body. I uh, don't know what wood it is. It's not American made, it can't be. This is plywood. Look inside there. It's got to be an import, but still, nevertheless, a very good guitar. I'll carve a bit away there, I think, just for that spring. I'm going to recommend also we put another spring in the back there. We can get away with two, but it's just a pain in the butt to set up. Neck, fingerboard, a lot of grime in there, and all needs cleaning him up. Cleaning up. I told Justin it didn't really need a setup, but looking at it, it does need a setup. Um, those saddles are flat as a pancake. We need to get that radius back in them. So. I'm not going to go ahead and dive in to the fret level at the moment. Um, I'm going to talk to Justin to see what he says. But I think if he likes the guitar that much, he should maybe consider having this refretted. Um, there's no oh, there's a lack of the frets as well, which is a bit of a bind. I'll talk to him to see what he says. Uh, could be a bit of a bastard of a refret, this actually. I'm going to see what I can do with the fret level because there's quite a lot of wear on these frets I hope so it's had a lot of solos played on this, a lot of high end stuff. Um, 
I'm going to take the strings off, I'm going to ascertain it again, I'm going to give it a once over again, see what I think. But I think it might well be worth giving this a refret rather than a fret level. Well, I think we'd get away with free level, but uh, a fret level, but only just. Let's see what it says, and um, I'll come back with an update later. Right, back with this Kramer Pacer. I've talked to um, the owner, Justin, uh, he's a regular client, and um, I've talked to him and he says, yeah, go for a refret. Uh, pretty wise decision. The frets are flattered out in a lot of areas. Uh, not flattered out, they've got some grooves, quite a lot of grooves here. They're really quite low, and when you get up to this top end, they've flattered out quite a bit. Now, the thing is with Justin, he likes low frets. He's not mad keen on, he certainly doesn't like jumbo frets, so he doesn't, and he doesn't like high frets. So these are pretty low, so dressing these, we'd get them right down. And I recommended to him that we go with a refret. It could spend 95 quid on a fret level if you wanted to, and the guitar is going to last him a couple of years, then it's going to want refretting anyway. Or it can spend 150 quid on a refret, plus the price of a fret wire, plus the price of a new nut. So you're looking at 175, 180 quid, set strings 185 quid, whereas if we go with 18% nickel silver frets, which is what I use now, uh, you're going to get 15 years out of it. You can probably even a lot more. I would say even with heavy play, 18% nickel silver, you're going to get at least, at the very least, 10 years out of the fret wire. And if you go with a high fret wire, I always recommend at least 1.2 mil high. It's a medium kind of size. If you go 1.2 mil high, you're going to get at the very least one fret level out of it, maybe even two, probably even two fret levels out of it. Which then, if you're looking at, if you're looking at a minimum of 10 years and you get one uh, fret dress out of it, it's 20 years of frets, that's with really heavy use. You're gonna get 20 years for 185 quid. It's 18 pound 50 a year, come on, reckon it up. So, he's decided to go for the refret option. Wire I'm gonna use, because he doesn't like wide and high, I've measured the wire that's on there, and it is 2.6, 2.7 mil wide anyway. I've actually got some in stock, 2.7mm wide, so I'm going with the same fret wire and the height of this, 1.1mm, and it's 18% nickel silver, which is quite a lot harder than the 12%. I put this, at the, if you look at a stainless steel, the difference between stainless steel that doesn't wear and 12% nickel silver, this sits right in the middle. It's the same strength as something like Jeskar Evo Gold. Uh, 18, I'm using 18% nickel silver on all my refrets now. Um, I don't charge any extra, even though it's more hard wearing on the tools. Uh, it takes longer to work, um, but it's what I've been using. I've been using it for about three months, three, three or four months now. It's all I use, it's all I recommend. If I was doing it in stainless steel, I'd be charging another 100 quid on top. Why is that you say? Well, because it knackers your tools and it's a bind to work with. So if people really want stainless steel with me, I'm putting 100 pounds straight on the job because I don't really want to work with it. But 18% nickel silver or gold Evo, Jeskar Evo gold. Yeah, that's your one. So here we go. As you can see, frets, quite a bit of wear down this end as well, grooves in there. Much better to replace. Uh, there is, there's no binding on there as such, but the edges are glossed over, so we're going to lose that gloss edge. Hopefully I'm not going to rip anything to pieces when I pull them frets out, but really careful pulling them out, get some good heat in there. If we do, if anything does pull out, we'll just fill in with uh, little dobs of super glue here and there and a bit of wood dust. We can do a real good job on that. So that's what we're going to do. Next going to want cleaning up. We will check the radius of the board. I'll re-radius, I'll sand down that, we'll re-radius that. Um, and that's really going to be it. Setup's going to be pretty easy. I'm going to also... I'm not keen on this bridge and neither is Justin. It's okay. But if we hardtail that, it's gonna be a lot better. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hardtail it. Um, and by hardtailing, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a block of wood inside uh, between these springs in that gap there. And basically what that'll mean is, and we can probably, got, if we can get one behind there, we'll get one behind it as well. We're gonna hardtail it, means that Fulcrum tremolo will not move at all. Gives us a hard tail guitar, it'd be absolutely fantastic. So once we've got the action set and all that, brilliant. I don't know what Seymour Duncans are in here, uh, but they're absolutely fantastic. They're really, really nice sounding pickups. The guitar sounds amazing. We weighed up the pros and cons with this and decided, is it really worth spending 100 and, 
80 quid or whatever on a refret. Because Justin paid so little for the guitar, and is it, I think, I don't know if it's one of his first guitars or what, but it's got a lot of sentimental value, this guitar for him. So it is really worth doing. 185 quid on this, you're going to get yourself a good solid guitar for 20, 30, 40 years. Um, it doesn't need anything else doing to it. The neck works fine, the truss rod works fine. Pickups are great, the electrics are great. You really can't complain. You're going to get a, you're going to get a real good solid guitar for years to come. I love playing this. It sounds absolutely fantastic. The neck's wonderful. So you can't really go wrong. Something else that's missing as well. It's got no truss rod cover there. I don't know if it's in the bag. I haven't looked. Thing is, I've got some free ply knocking about. I'll make him a truss rod cover for that. So it's going to look fantastic. Also, we were going to keep the strings, but because I'm doing a refret, I've decided I've just cut them off, even though we're in really good nick, because you don't have to be threading them through here when they're all bent at the end. So I'm going to chuck him a set of strings in for note. Um, I'll stick some Deodario 10s on there, which, you know, he owes me a pint for that. So that's it. It's where we're going to be. Um, I'm just going to order in a, graph, a graphite nut for nothing. One thing there has on there, just chip the paint out there, taking the nut off, always happens. I've got the chip. I'm going to try and glue it back in. But it's no big deal, we can always sort that out. So that's it. Fret wire is there, we've got the fret wire. It's ordered a couple of bits in. I'm going to be doing this in a couple of weeks. I'm not going to do it straight away. So it's where we are with that guitar. Um, I'll come back with an update on it as and when it's available. Uh, but there you go, in the meantime, do to each other as always. I'll come back soon. Boom. Right, hello everyone. As you can see, we have a guitar neck in the vice, ready to remove the frets. I've already removed one. Uh, it's not nothing you've not seen before on my channel. Um, I'm going to get out of the way and I'm going to explain how I'm going to remove them. I've done it many times before. The frets need replacing. It's a Kramer, can't remember the model. Uh, really nice guitar. I've already removed one fret, like I said, um, some time ago. I've got an old soldier armor, I don't use it. it gets, it's a 40 watt, but it gets too hot. So I adapted a bit to fit over the frets. So I'm going to remove the frets. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat this enough just to melt the glue underneath. And it slides along the fret. It won't slip off. It doesn't fit the fret perfectly, but it fits it pretty well. It slides across it. It's got a groove in there. What I'm going to do is heat the fret. Trouble glue bubbles a bit. I've only just put the soldering iron on so it's not super hot yet. It's going, oh, there you go. Rosewood fingerboard. I've already removed one for it. It was so easy to remove. It means it's going to make my job a lot easier because all I'm going to do is sand the glue off when this is done. I go across my radius block. I imagine it's a 12 inch radius. I go across my radius block, take all the extra glue off, just slightly carve into the wood, not take any material off, just to reshape it, just to give us that, uh, where, where is it? Give us that radius across the neck or across the fingerboard. There you go, that's hot enough. Come on now, all we do is we carefully nip the edge up first. And we can just bend that back. Once it's bent back, we can just go across in small two or three millimeters at a time. And there you go, that's warm. But that's it, that's done, it's come out absolutely beautiful. There's hardly any glue there. Um, I'm gonna cut through these edges of the fingerboard with a saw when I'm done or with a blade when I'm done just so we can get the new frets in easier. Going to be a nice easy refret this one I imagine. We'll get it all on the um, fret press over there because it's a removable neck and then we can look at uh, getting them all leveled and blah 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 blah. I'm going to nip on, going to remove all these frets and uh, I'll come back later show you how we get on with smoothing the board off getting ready for the new frets. And here we go. Um, removed all the frets really it come out really straightforward a lot of it I didn't have to use, really have to use heat on them but I did anyway what I've done since then is gone over with a radius block I've sanded all the old glue off and then I've gone down and I've cleaned all the fret slots first using a uh, exacto knife and then using my fret slot cutting saw uh, which I got from Beaver Guitars Clive Eastwood friend of mine out there and uh, all I did I've sawn through um, blah 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 we've cleaned all the slots out and we're all done once that's done and I've re-radiused, or, or at least cleaned up, I've not re-radiused yet, I've cleaned it up. I then go across with a load of white spirit, just to dry out the fingerboard. Uh, like, 
And what it does, it got all the muck off, all the old grime and muck in there, then clean my slots. We'll just do that, wipe it off, give it a good clean. Um, you see now all the slots are cut all the way through. I'm going to zoom in just a little so you can see what we're talking about. And there you go. We're all, the slots are all cleaned out. Where are we? There you go, we're here. We'll just go through one. You have to be careful when you're coming through these edges just to clear all the gunk out and not crack the lacquer. And there you go, these are all done. So this guitar, bar doing the radius, I'll check the radius before I put the frets in, but we're virtually ready to put the frets in. I'm going with a standard um, fret wire. The ones that come off were 2.7 wide by about 1 mil high, 1.1 high. I'm going with the same fret wire, 2.7 mil wide, 1.2 millimeters high. Justin was uh, adamant that he didn't want to go much higher on the frets. He doesn't like high frets and he doesn't like super wide. So we're going to go with virtually the same fret wire. I will be using 18% nickel silver, which is harder than regular standard is 12%. Stainless steel is too hard, it's too hard for my tools, it's too hard to work with for me. So I use the 18% which sits between regular 12% um, and uh, stainless steel. So it's a, it is a hard fret wire, um, it's very long lasting, it's going to last years and years. Going with 1.2mm height as well, it will give us a redress somewhere down the line if we need to. A heavy player that plays regularly, I mean two, three times a week, you're still going to get 10 years out of 18% out of nickel silver, I would imagine, minimum. And then you've got to redress after that. So you're going to get 20 years out of it. So it's so worth doing. It's worth paying that extra bit of money uh, to get a bit of better fret wire. It's harder for me to work with. It's harder on my tools, but I don't charge any extra for it. So uh, always worth considering that and getting that done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this I'm going to bolt this to a piece of MDF and we're going to get it all flat. We're going to also trust I'll get it flat. We're going to get it supported both ends. Um, I'm saying that I might not be able to do that because we've got an angled uh, edge stop there. What I'm going to do is somehow I'm going to get this perfectly level anyway. Where do I just do it on the jig? I might put it on my jig over there on the uh, Stumac type fret jig I built. Um, we'll get it supported. I'll get this re radius. Once it's re radius, it's just a matter of taking the neck back off and uh, getting the frets in, which I'm going to do on the fret press. I'll come back to that part of the process as and when I'm ready. So what I'm going to do now, like I say, is I'm going to make sure the radius is fine on the fingerboard, uh, and then we're going to proceed to get the frets in. I'll be back shortly. Right, the neck is all straight. Um, I've checked the radius, sanded it down a little more. The radius is absolutely bang on. The neck straight. Um, I'm back on this vice and what I'm going to do is I've decided that there's a little bit of wear and it's a little bit this fingerboard's a little bit light in some areas especially down these edges if I zoom in you'll get a better, a better idea down these edges here it's really quite light and there's a good bit of scraping gone off here at some point so what I'm going to do is I've decided I'm going to go with a little bit of wood stain I'm just going to get one maybe two at the top coats of wood stain what I was going to do is I'm going to use ebony wood stain um, I've already given it a good shake. It's Rustin's wood dye I use. I'm just going to get a couple of coats, and once it's coated, I'm going to get, rub it off again. And what it's going to do is, it's going to slightly darken. It's not going to make it black, it's going to slightly darken it, and it's going to bring that grain out. So I'm just going to go with a dot, and that's as much as I'm going to use. And if you see, it isn't going to really darken it. It'll look dark now because it's wet. But all it's going to do is, it's going to bring that grain out. This is, it's not, I'm not being paid for this, I've not been asked to do this, I'm just going to do this because I know from experience that this works. And that's all I'm going to do, I'm going to give it one coat. Now that seems to have darkened it quite a bit, don't worry about that, it's not going to stay that colour. All it's going to do is, I'm going to raise the grain of the wood, actually it looks beautiful. If Justin sees this, he'll probably say, oh stain it anyway, it looks great. Well yeah it does look great, you're not wrong. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back again with this, and I'm just going to rub, rub it in. And that is beautiful, that's raised the grain. And there you go, that's beautiful. Now once this is all done, got the frets in and we bang some uh, mineral oil in, on here. 
going to raise that grain right out. So that's it. We are now ready to refret. I'm going to get my um, fret press re uh, prepared. I'm going to get the fret wire. I'm going to cut it all to length. And I'm going to proceed to get the frets in. I'm going to glue them in, as I always do now. I'm using the thinnest, or not the very thinnest, but a very thin CA glue, or as we call it, super glue over here. This is one of the really thin ones. And all we do is just put a bead down there, drop it in, then we press the frets in. Um, pretty straightforward procedure on this because it's a removable neck. I love working on removable necks. It makes it so much easier. So that's it, I'm gonna blob on. I'll be back again shortly. Right, we're back, and I'm just showing how I set up my station when I'm doing a refret. I've got the refret, I've got my neck rest, which I'll use on the jig uh, to press the frets in all down this end. And when we get to this bit, I'll be using this area. I've got a jig made. Uh, I'll be using this slotted in. It's got a groove in there, so it just slides in and stays. I don't need that while I'm starting out, so I'm going to remove it. As you can see here, I've got all my frets cut and radius. I used them on the, here's my fret bending tool. I've been slightly over radius, like this is a 12 inch radius, I've gone with a 14 bend and what it does is it drops the ends in, when we've got the ends in we press the middle down so it pushes them, presses them down and pushes the frets out which is what we want. I'm going to super glue them in using thin CA glue. I'm not going to show the procedure, I'm going to start from this end and I'm going to work the way up. As you can see I've got all the frets here cut, nothing's in the way. Uh, I've had to double the height on this holder so it, we, we don't drop this on the bench. And it's just a matter of, I'll explain the principle but I'm not going to show it. We've got the 12 inch radius call in the fret press, which is an armor press I had adapted. Um, and all it is, is it just basically all we're going to do is, we're going to have the fret in place. I'm going to slightly tap them in with a fret armor, which I've not got out at the moment. But what we're going to do is we're going to put them in place, and as we're in place, we're going to bring the fret press down. Blah blah blah, like so. I'm going to press it in. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to prepare to get the first one done. Like I say, I'm not going to show the procedure, I've showed it all before. The camera is the tripod, it's not in the way, but I, you know, I'm just not going to film it. It's the way it is. I'll probably film a couple when I come back to do the last couple or whatever. So, I just want to show how I set up the station. Always get it in an area where you're working, you're not working over yourself, you're not going to knock anything, you're not going to break anything. Get your frets lined up. I like to line them up in front of me. And it's just a matter of taking one and gluing it. So my procedure is going to be take the fret, get your fret positioned. Well, it's not, it's not even that. I've got that wrong actually. You don't. You take your fret first. You take your super glue. You have your guitar neck taped up. So when you get some run out, it goes on the tape, not on the guitar. Then you're placing your fret. Once your fret's in, we take it over to the press and we press it in. I'll come back and show you a couple of those uh, once I've made good progress. I'll be back soon. Right, as you may see, I've all but done the refret. I've saved two to show you how I actually work it. All these frets are in, all these frets are in. I've left two in the middle. I'm going to show you my procedure. Um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to run a bead of glue down the centre. I'm going to put the fret in. I'm going to tap the end in with a fret hammer. I'm going to bring it straight over to the press. And um, we're going to get them pressed in. So uh, rather than me gab about it, let me just zoom in a little. And you'll get to see how it works. Right, super glue. Straight down the slot. You put as much in as goes in. You don't have to go mental. Um, and there, right, shortest of. There you go. Fret over where it needs to be. Just tap in each side. Just tap them in, bring the neck rest over with you, line it up beneath the fret press, make sure it's central, I know it's central anyway. Then all we're going to do is we're just going to press down and that is the fret gone in. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check the height of the fret in relation to all the others. Seems fine. Just tap the ends in there and I'm going to straight away snip off the edges make it easier to work on later. That's it. I've um, got one more to do. Welcome back. And here we are with the Kramer, um, whatever, I can't remember what model it is. But anyway, let's show you where we are. I've bolted it to a piece of 30mm MDF because it's going to have to go 
on the jig. With it having a slanted headstock, I can't put it flat across here like I normally do, across this piece of MDF, so it's the opposite way. So we'll be pouring it on this jig. We'll be strapping it up as we do. Uh, we're going to get it all set level and um, we'll carry on with the fret job in a day or two because I've decided it's late afternoon, well, it's afternoon, late afternoon on a Saturday and I'm knocking off and I don't work Sundays anyway. And uh, I'm going to show you where we are. We have got the frets in, cleaned up the fingerboard, filled in any um, chipping we've got there. So it's all ready. We're ready now to take the edges off, we do the beveling, then level and crown all the frets. So that's what I'm going to be doing um, when I come back to this on Monday or whenever I do it. Uh, but that's it. Well, that's it for this weekend. I didn't get round to looking at the... Um, I was going to look at a Gibson SG today. Didn't get round to that. I've had a nice relaxing day. Um, you know, and that's where I am. So I've decided I'm going to knock off. I'm also going to wrap up part one of this video. I've got absolutely no idea how long this video is. Might be too long. I don't normally like to go above 20 minutes. This might even be longer. I don't know. But let's, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to end this part of the video here. I'm going to come back in part two of the video. Uh, we're going to get the um, neck on the jig there. We're going to get the frets level, get beveled, leveled, uh, crammed and polished. And that's going to be in part two of the video. So I will bid you a uh, good day. I'll just say to you all, have a good weekend and I'll talk to you soon.